bright joyfully lit Christmas tree stands in the middle as people throng around it. That was Mariupol 2021. A year later, the same place is strewn with debris from the war-torn theatre raised by Russians. The fate of the historic drama theatre of Mariupol is the story of Ukraine under Russian invasion of 2022. Two days before Christmas, Russian authorities started demolishing the remains of the Mariupol theater. A day before the festive day, Russia appointed authorities erected a massive Christmas tree in the city. I took a photo for my daughter to show that they are preparing for the holidays here. They probably want to distract people, lighten things up, but I think everyone is not in the mood. The renovation is still ongoing in our apartment. It's cold. It's five or six degrees Celsius in my apartment. What kind of New Year is it? The upscale hotel on the outskirts of Kyiv is now a rehabilitation center housing children who have experienced the horrors of the Russian invasion. These children have experienced nearly 10 months of war. A 12-year-old child found his brother without a head when he was riding a bicycle not 10 meters from the house. It is very sad. In my opinion, such measures help the children to regain childhood. At least for an hour, they can believe in miracles again and believe that adults are good. They can believe again that fairy tale heroes can come. Saint Nicholas can make dreams come true. Since the first day of the Russian invasion of Ukraine on 24th February 2022, UNICEF records claim that two million children have fled war in search of safety across borders, with an additional 2.5 million children being displaced within the country. 60% of these children now are forced from their homes as attacks on urban areas continue, paying the price of a year of war on their homeland. Speaking of children, let us think of the many children in Ukraine who suffer, suffer so much because of this war. Let us think about the Ukrainian children in this time of feasting when God becomes a child. The majority of those that I have seen here can't manage to smile. It is grave when a child loses the capacity to smile. These children carry within themselves the tragedy of that war. So inhumane, so harsh. Let us think of the Ukrainian people this Christmas. Without electricity, heating and the essential things they need to survive. And let us pray to the Lord that he brings peace as soon as possible. Eight-year-old Sasha Titarenko is a lucky girl. She, along with her family, left Zaporizhia and took shelter in Russia. Vladimir Putin chose Sasha's postcard from the New Year Tree of Wishes and gifted her a trip to the residence of Russia's equivalent of Santa, Father Frost. Hello, Sashenka. Do you like it at Father Frost's? Very much. Great. What did you do there today and yesterday? And what did you like most at Father's Frosts? You had tea there, right? With Barankas. Russian state TV showed the phone conversation. 
14 million Ukrainians displaced, including 7 million living as refugees abroad, are not as lucky as Sasha. For them, Vladimir Putin is a villain. The People's Republic of Donbass asked Russia for help. In this regard, under Article 51, Part 7 of the Charter of the United Nations, with the approval of the Russian State Federal Council, and in accordance with the Friendship and Mutual Assistance Treaties with the Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic, ratified by the Russian Parliament on February 22nd. I decided to conduct a special military operation. It aims to protect people who have been bullied and subjected to genocide by the key regime for eight years. For that, we will strive for demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine and will bring to justice those who committed multiple bloody crimes against civilians, including Russian citizens. And with that, on 24th February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine from three fronts in the biggest assault on a European state since World War II. Day before that, Russian troops gathered at the Belarusian border of Ukraine. in what the Kremlin called a routine joint military exercise. Ukraine started to raise alarm, but the West and world at large never thought it to be a serious threat. Within the first 24 hours, it seemed that all calculations on both sides had gone wrong. Ukrainians were shocked, but couldn't believe that their neighbor could really have invaded their country. While Russians thought that Kyiv would crumble in hours, much like what happened in 2014. But 2022 proved everyone wrong. The US and its NATO allies were cornered and put in a difficult spot. Helping Ukraine with arms and ammunition would drag the whole world into another world war. And doing nothing meant Putin could run over Ukraine and advance straight into the heart of Europe. But what no one counted on was the defiance of Ukrainian leadership in the face of the most brutal, unjustified assault from day one. We are we are already handing out weapons and will hand them out to defend our country to everyone who wants and has the capacity to defend our sovereignty. The future of Ukraine depends on every citizen. The U.S. President Joe Biden hit Russia with a wave of sanctions on the first day of the invasion. These measures impede Russia's ability to do business in major currencies along with sanctions against banks and state-owned enterprises. The Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Without provocation, <clears throat> without justification, without necessity, this is a premeditated attack. This is a deliberate, cold-blooded and long-planned invasion. But in the middle of possible assault on Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, people started to flee. Ukrainian guards had to fire warning shots to prevent a stampede at Kyiv's central railway station on the second day of the invasion as thousands of people tried to force their way onto evacuation trains. 
people grabbed whatever they could and walked, trudged, dragged their feet to cross the border to safety to an unknown future. Whoever couldn't leave learned to live in bunkers. Sirens became the new alarm clocks that kept ringing at all awkward hours. And soon February was over and it was March. My heart is being torn apart. I'm sorry. It is tough. When families are separated, it is very hard. I'm sorry. I simply lack words. And I feel so sorry for these children. They are so young. Spring came in Ukraine, but there was no one out to enjoy or celebrate it. People were busy surviving. While couples got married and mothers lost their babies at birth, On the war field, Ukraine ordered its able-bodied men to stay back while others were leaving the country. Sons, fathers, brothers, husbands said goodbye to their loved ones promising to reunite one day, knowing very well that day might not come. I'm from the south of Ukraine. Where the war initially started, bad people came there and mutilated our lives. And now I have to leave my whole family behind. And I'm running away with a child. I don't know where I am going. I'm running away with the child because I want my child to stay alive. Poland became home to approximately one million additional refugees from the Ukraine war. By the year's end, nearly 60% of them have found jobs. In Warsaw alone, schools and nurseries have taken 18,000 kids, and Warsaw's mayor is appealing for European financial support. Russians advanced up to Kyiv, Kharkiv, Zafrazia, from the Donbass area to Donetsk, Mariupol. We now come to the statement. European Union, UK, US kept slapping sanctions after sanctions on Russia. Over the next more than 300 days, US alone has provided Ukraine with more than $18.6 billion in security assistance and $13 billion in direct economic assistance. Other countries from Europe and Asia, too, have stood firmly by Ukraine with economic assistance. Individual soldiers from different parts of the world arrived in Ukraine to fight for it and push the Russians away. Russia brought in Chechen mercenaries and along with it came the nuclear threat from Moscow. Russian forces seized control of the Zafrazia nuclear power plant in early March after setting an adjacent training facility on fire. NATO rejected Ukraine's appeal for no-fly zones. The only way to actually implement something like a no-fly zone uh, is to send NATO planes into Ukrainian airspace and to shoot down Russian planes, and that uh, could lead to a full-fledged war. Um, in, uh, in Europe, President Biden has been clear that we uh, are not going to get into a war with Russia. In Russia, police detained more than 4,300 people at countrywide protests against President Putin's invasion of Ukraine. But the rest of Russia remained quiet as it bombed a children's hospital in the besieged port of Mariupol during a supposed ceasefire to enable some of the hundreds of thousands of civilians trapped in the city to escape. More and more people started to leave cities and villages that were their home. The United Nations estimated that 90% of Mariupol's buildings were destroyed after Russia used tanks, artillery and airstrikes to try to dislodge its defenders.
a top official from the world body said in June that at least 1,348 civilians had been killed, including 70 children, and that the final toll was probably thousands higher. He estimated that 22,000 civilians were killed in Mariupol in those airstrikes by Russia. But shelling intensified as Russia moved closer to Kiev. Ukrainian president sent out an urgent cry for help. As the leader of my nation, I am addressing the President Biden. You are the leader of the nation, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. And he responded. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia, for free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. Desperate Russia intensified its attack and the massacre of Bucha came to light as March turned to April. Tied bodies shot at close range, a mass grave and other signs of executions were found from the town of Bucha in the Kiev region after it was retaken from Russian troops. These are war crimes and they will be recognized by the world as genocide. Male resident, and what am I supposed to do? How do you think? Hang myself or what? Moscow denied all accusations related to the killings of civilians in Bucha. Pope Francis condemned the massacre of Bucha and held a Ukrainian flag sent from the town. But that wasn't enough to stop Vladimir Putin. Missiles kept striking. Sometimes the target was a train station, killing more than 50 people. At other times, neighborhoods killing hundreds. Ukraine blamed Russia and they kept denying. And then the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, Moskva, sank. Moscow said the ship sank while being towed in stormy seas after a fire caused by an ammunition explosion. Ukraine said one of its missiles had caused the Moscow to sink. By mid-April, the Battle of Donbass became the central focal point. After two months of continuous attack, the port city of Mariupol turned into a wasteland. You wake up in the morning and you cry. You cry in the evening. I don't know where to go at all. I'm not alone. Imagine, everything is destroyed. Everything is broken. Where should the people go now? Here they're sitting with small kids, with little ones. President Vladimir Putin exhorted Russians to battle in a defiant victory day speech. But by mid-May, Russia's siege of the Ukrainian city of Mariupol stuttered. On 23rd May, a Ukrainian court sentenced a Russian soldier to life in prison for killing an unarmed civilian in the first war crimes trial arising from Russia's invasion. Ukraine and Russia were locked in a war of gaining ground as tanks from both sides kept marching across the country. And what am I supposed to do? What do you think? Hang myself or what? If we have to go through it, we will. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky won backing from the leaders of France, Germany, Italy and Romania to give Ukraine European Union candidate status on 16 June. Within weeks of this, Finland and Sweden gained access to NATO. It became the most significant expansion of the alliance since the 1990s.
the Russian invasion of Ukraine started to change the geopolitics of the world order forever. Putin is sometimes described not as a commander-in-chief, but as Russia's historian-in-chief. Seven months before the invasion of a pseudo-historical essay penned by a trained KGB spy turned politician Vladimir Putin was published. He argued Ukraine was historically indistinguishable from Russia. Citing Oleg the Prophet's 10th century dictum, let Kiev be the mother of all Russian cities. With that diktat, he invaded Ukraine to get rid of what he called a fascist regime led by a comedian-turned-politician elected as president of Ukraine, who was a Russian-speaking Jew. As summer turned to autumn, Putin ordered a partial mobilization to beef up his invasion force, causing widespread protests in Russia and panic among young men who did not want to die for Putin's imperial dream. Many started to leave Russia. Moscow never revealed its cost of loss in more than 300 days old conflict with Ukraine. But the U.S. Chief of Staff, Mark Milley, claims as many as 100,000 Russian soldiers have died. Based on open source references, the Oring site determined that the Russians had lost a total of 1,491 main battle tanks since 24th February, of which 856 different types were destroyed. 62 damaged and 55 abandoned, and the Ukrainians had taken more than 518. Russia, albeit involuntarily, has become Ukraine's most important arms supplier. The successive battlefield defeats have damaged the reputation of the great Russian military. First, there had to be regrouping in the north when Russia realized it could not take Kyiv and Chernaviv. On 6 September came the stunning collapse of the Russian front in the northeast in the Kharkiv region. On 11th November, Russia withdrew from the port city of Kherson, retreating from territory it had announced as annexed and part of Russia only 40 days earlier. Since September, Ukraine says, it has reclaimed more than 8,000 square kilometer of Russian-occupied territory. Beyond the game of shelling each other and people living in debris with no electricity and spending nights in makeshift bunkers, there's a war raging on a different front and the whole world willy-nilly is part of it. Right after Russia invaded Ukraine, countries united barring China and eight other Asian countries to vote Moscow out of the UN Human Rights Council. India abstained from voting. And that was the beginning. In one international diplomatic body after another, the Russia not welcome sign is going up, including in different international sports events. In the biggest U-turn, the Chinese defense minister in June said his country would not be providing one bullet to Russia. China today portrays its relationship with Russia as a partnership and not an alliance. The Russian ruble might have lost its shine, hit by multiple sanctions since February 2022, but Putin still rides high on energy might. The war in Ukraine has been the primary reason for the rising price of oil and natural gas in the world. When the invasion started, the West was heavily dependent on Russia for its energy supply. And in this, Germany plays the most important role. Through a mixture of state planning and individual penny pinching, Germany has weaned itself off Russian energy. An extraordinary achievement for a country that was dependent on Russia for 55% of its energy supply. It has found alternative suppliers, including in Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium and France. The nights are longer. The thermometers have dropped and energy bills are soaring. As Bakhmut and Kyiv and Donmas regions battle for survival, the recurring nightmare of Vladimir Zelensky is that Ukraine's suffering might drop out of the news and the country, once synonymous with freedom, becomes a burden for the world. I want to say to him, please tell him he has gone crazy. He has lost his mind.
How is it possible that all these missiles, bombs and rockets are being used now in the 21st century? Even the Germans did not do such things. The calendar turns another page to another month and another year while the war goes on in Ukraine and across the region.